In this video, I'll be doing a basic rules derivation. So the 10 basic rules are here. They are essentially just the introduction and elimination rules for all the connectives. Of course, there's a couple exceptions. One is that there's no introduction rule for the conditional. We actually need to do a show line for that. And secondly is this rule R, repeat. I will explain in this video why you would ever want to use repeat, and there's pretty much only one case where you would ever want to use it, and that will appear here. This video will make use of my sort of skills for derivations, so I'll be doing show line breakdown, automatic moves, proof structure, and contradiction generators. If you're not familiar with these terms, I strongly suggest that you watch the videos where I actually really focus and zero in on these skills so that you can get to know them. We always begin in the same way. I always write my show line. So let's get started. Show uh, negation bracket P by conditional Q. Uh, sorry, by conditional negation Q arrow W or R. Now I do my show line breakdown. So I check what is the main connective of my show line. I look, I always look here, but I should just double check that I didn't make a copy error. That actually happens quite a bit. So here it's a conditional. So I know that I get to assume the antecedent and I will show the consequent. Show w or r. Now I finished my show line breakdown. This is not a conditional. So I just do the assume uh, id and start a proof by contradiction. I don't know if I have to use this line, but it doesn't hurt me to put it in at all. So I just do it. At this point, I start looking at what I have. Well, premise one, that's easy. It, it's a conjunction. Conjunction is the nicest automatic move because it just says if you have fries and salad, you have fries, you have salad. So I will just simplify these out. So I have negation Q arrow P and that is premise one simplify. And I also have P arrow R, P arrow R, and that is premise one simplify. Now I can put a little check mark above that, which is basically telling me that I've done my elimination moves on that. And I don't really have to look there anymore. So now I look at my automatic uh, moves. Uh, line two is the negation, but it's a negation of a biconditional, so I can't do anything to it. However, this is an important line in general, so I'm going to put a star because you should recognize this as a contradiction generator. It's the negation of something. I don't have my derived rule, so I can't move that negation in. Line four is also a contradiction generator. It's the negation of a disjunction, so I'll put a little star next to that as well. And line five is a conditional, and line six is a conditional. So this is one of those cases where I'm sort of stuck. I don't actually have anything really to do. Uh, so I need some sort of direction to move forward. And to get unstuck, I typically would need a show line. So here, the sort of tickets out of this are either proof structure or to use one of my contradiction generators. Let's do the proof structure move. So here I have show W or, or R. So I know that I want uh, W or R. But of course, this is a disjunction. So this really means I need W or I need R. And to go back up, I would just use the addition rule. Because once I have one of them, I can get the disjunction no problem. I look at what I have, and I realize that I have no Ws anywhere, but I do have an R here. So I really am going to shoot for this. And so the golden rule is, if you want something, show it. So I want R. So I'm going to write show R. And on line eight, I do my show line breakdown. There's no conditional there. So it's just an assume ID and I get negation R. Generating line seven is really the hardest part of this derivation, but it demonstrates that you understand that proof structure will get you out of a bind. Now this negation R, I look around and I just pattern match. There's the R that I was looking for. And of course, now I know that I can do a modus, uh, modus tollens and I get negation P. And that's just eight, line uh, six, and MT. Now with this negation P, I can also do something fancy here, because the negation P is of course the same negation of the consequent here. And I actually get not not Q, but I'll just simplify that out to Q. And I'll say nine, line five, modus tollens, and then I did a double negate. Okay, so I just did a bunch of stuff, but I actually don't have a contradiction. Now I'm sort of stuck. So this typically happens. I looked here for a sort of proof structure guidance, and I got a good show line, which is show R. Because if I succeed, I know I will actually get out of the proof 
no problem. But I sort of ran out of gas and I'm stuck here because I have a bunch of atomics but I have nothing to do. This is where you look around for other direction. More proof structure, which there is none in this case, or a contradiction generator. And of course I have a contradiction generator right here that I really want to use. How do I know it's this one? Because I just generated a bunch of P's and Q's and this is a contradiction generator that has P's and Q's in it. So I'm just going to continue my derivation and I'm going to have line 11 and I know that I need a clever show line here. Actually, you don't need the show line. If you recognize what it is that you want, uh, you can actually get it directly without having to write the show line in. Uh, but I'll just write the show line. It makes the proof a little longer, but I'll show you that it doesn't really matter. Now, what we really want for the contradiction generator is we always want the unnegated form. We want what's inside. So I'm going to show P by conditional not Q. Now, again, I'll do a bit of proof structure. I want P by conditional not Q. I know to get that I need P arrow not Q and I need not Q arrow P. I need both of these things and then I'll do conditional to by conditional. But look, one of these I already have. So that's really nice. I can just say, got this one, check, that's on line five. So the only thing I'm missing is P arrow not Q. So how do I get P arrow not Q? Well, if you want something, show it. So I'm going to immediately write show P arrow not Q and I proceed. So I go P assume C D. I'm going to do this the long way and then I'm actually going to erase it and show you the short way just to sort of speed things up um, in the actual number of lines I use and I just want to show you the difference. So on line 14, I'll do the full show line breakdown. I'll say show not Q, and then I'll say 15 Q assume ID. And what I'm looking for now uh, is some sort of contradiction. So I realize I have P here and I have Q here. I just look over and try and find other things that match. There we go. There's my negation P. That contradicts with my P. Now, this for this, I'm going to use repeat. The only time you need to use repeat is when you're going to use a line outside your current subderivation in order to generate some sort of closing condition. In this case, a contradiction. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to take line 13, that's my P, and I'll just say 13 repeat. And then I will take line 9, negation P, and I'll take line 9 repeat. And finally, I will say 16, 17 ID and box and close. So I had to repeat these lines to generate the contradiction because they weren't in my subderivation. Okay, so I'm going to erase some lines and show you how to do this a little bit quicker, um, and then I'll show you how to do it a lot quicker. When you realize that you have a contradiction out there, you don't actually have to write all those lines out. You could actually do it all in the code. So I could say 13 repeat, then I could say 9 repeat, ID. I don't even really need to write anything here. In fact, this is how Logic 2010 uh, allows you to do it. It just sort of generates a blank line here, and that's fine. And here I'm telling the reader, look here, I repeated the line. Look here, I repeated the line. ID. And that's the only time you would want to use a repeat. When you repeat something in your derivation, not a premise. Premises are always available. So this is a line that you created in your derivation that is outside your current subderivation, and you want to use it for a closing condition. Now I'm going to show you an even faster way of doing all this. Uh, again, you don't have to ever do the faster ways. You just need to uh, do whatever way you're comfortable with, but I just want to make it clear that this is perfectly acceptable. So I'll erase all that. Uh, so here I have show p arrow not q, and I wrote p. Well, I could have noticed immediately that this p and this negation p contradict. So what I could just do right here is negation P, and I'll say 9, repeat, and then 13 ID, and that's the derivation. Why? Because the second you have a contradiction, it doesn't matter how you started. In this course, we allow for mixed derivations. So even though I started with an assumed CD, if I have a contradiction or I got a direct derivation, I could close in a different way. These are sort of advanced shortcuts. If you didn't like any of these advanced shortcuts, it doesn't matter. As long as you can show P arrow not Q in some way, you're fine. 
Okay, let's remind ourselves what was the point of all this. Uh, so this is now solved, and that's over here. Oh yes, I remember the point. The point is now I can do my conditional by conditional with these lines, because that's line 12. So now, uh, I guess this is line 15. Uh, let's erase to get a bit more space. On line 15, I will generate P by conditional not Q. And I took line 12, line 5, and I conditional by conditional them, and then this is a direct derivation. And that's how I get that. Okay, um, I'm going to finish the derivation and then I'm going to come back to something that you probably have a question for. So here I'm still showing R, and I've just shown this. Why did I want to do this? It's because it contradicted with the line I have start over here, line 2. So I'm going to use that repeat rule again, and I'll just say line 2, repeat, and with line 11, that's an indirect derivation, I've shown R. And finally, uh, is that finally? Yeah, finally, uh, no, almost. Why did I want to show R? Because proof structure told me that when I get R, I can add to get W or R. So I'll say W or R, and that's line 7 add. And of course, that means I have W or R. That's my current show line. So that's also a direct derivation. And you can just see all I'm doing now is I'm boxing and closing everything out so that I complete my derivation. And now, under the assumption of my antecedent, I've shown the consequent follows. So of course, I can box all that and say, oops, and say on line three, I have a conditional derivation. This is it. It's not too bad. I hope you see that I had to do show line breakdown, I had to do some automatic moves, and then I needed proof structure, and I also needed to use a contradiction generator over here to generate my full solution. I showed you how the repeat rule works. I also showed you some shortcuts related to mixed derivations. You don't have to worry about it if you don't like it. There is one uh, sort of question that you probably have, which is down here. So here on line 11, I have P, that's, uh, sorry, line 12, I have P arrow not Q. And then I took line 12, and I took line 5 over here, and I did a conditional by conditional, and then I did a direct derivation. Now you might ask, how come I didn't repeat line 5? Why didn't I repeat line 5 here? Didn't I say up here that I had to repeat lines that I was using for a closing condition? Well, yes, but I didn't use line 5 as my closing condition. You don't have to repeat lines if you just use them in a rule, which is what I did here. This direct derivation does not refer to line 5. It refers to the result of 12, 5, conditional, by conditional, which is this. And that's why I didn't need to repeat line 5. I spent a lot of time talking about minor things in the proof, like how to use the repeat rule, and also how to do some shortcuts on a uh, showing of a conditional when you have lots of parts. But that's not really the important parts of this derivation. I hope you see I was able to solve this by applying four of my five steps. Show line breakdown, automatic moves, proof structure, and contradiction generators. And from there, this derivation sort of falls apart.